Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the webinar, How to Use Your Voice to Speak and Sound Like a Professional Speaker. There's lots of things we can do with our voice, but one of the overarching principles is that our voice needs to indicate that we want to be there. It needs to indicate our passion, our sincerity, and it really needs to come through as interesting and engaging. So in the 30 minutes I've got with you, what I want to do is share some of the tips that speakers use and incorporate in their speaking style just to add a bit of interest, just to put a bit of professional polish on you as a speaker. So these are simple things. You haven't changed your content. You're still doing the same level of research. You know your material, but just the voice can add so much to a presentation. As always, I like people to participate in webinars, so please ask questions as we go, take notes, and of course apply the information to your own unique circumstances. And a good way to do that is think back to a recent presentation, or maybe think forward to one you've got coming up. What can you do differently? What can you incorporate to enhance that next presentation or that you could have used in that previous presentation. As always, ask questions during the webinar and you can also ask questions after the webinar via email. All right, let's get started. I like to start with a self audit and one of the things with communication skills is that self-awareness and inviting feedback into your life, into your presentations, it's, it's how we grow. Feedback is sometimes uncomfortable, but growth and comfort do not coexist. So when we get uncomfortable, when we make ourselves vulnerable and ask people to give us feedback, this is where we learn and grow and improve. So self-audit. What speed do you speak at? Some people speak really, really fast. Generally, speaking too slow is not a problem for Australians. There's the occasional Bernie Fraser, the ex-Federal Reserve boss, and Bernie's voice was so slow, so monotonous, that he now finds himself on TV for advertisements for industry superannuation funds. Bernie speaks really, really slow, no intonation, no rise and fall. Generally, if you don't have that position of power, which he had that expertise, that knowledge, then your audience won't enjoy a slow speaking. I'm talking about a really slow speaking speaker. Do you use any filler words? Um, uh, you know, like, like you should have been there. So what I want to talk about now, so next we'll get on to so, all these filler words that are distracting. Can you be heard clearly at the back of the room? And this is about, do you need a microphone? Or do you need some voice coaching to learn to project and fill your lungs deep down in the diaphragm so that your voice covers the back of the room without the need for a microphone? And of course, as soon as you get into the really big room, you would have a microphone. But are you aware of this? Is your voice interesting? Or is your voice boring? Do you have that excitement in your voice? I want to be here. That passion that comes through. I want to help you. I want to solve your problem. And do you have natural intonation and variation? So think of the radio quality voice, the John Laws of the world. Those people who just have this beautiful booming voice that goes up and down, very richness in its texture. I don't have one of those voices. I sometimes speak too fast. People tell me my voice is interesting. I use very few filler words and I have a good strong voice for most normal training rooms 
and meeting rooms. What is your audit of your voice? Why voice? You would have seen this graph before. I use it in my presentations. Around 55, 58% of our communication, our message, so what I'm saying to you today, comes in my body language. Quite hard on a webinar because my hands are below the desk, so I have to lift them if I really want to gesture. 35%, 33%, a third comes from my voice. So shut off the visuals, close your eyes, and then when you hear my voice, and this is what I meant in my opening introduction, your voice should show that you want to be there and that you're excited about your topic, you're passionate about your topic. That's why voice is so important. It's roughly a third of your toolbox, your toolkits, your ability to engage, influence your audience. That's why it's so important. Let's get started. The pace, what speed do you speak at? Speed is really important. We spoke about the slow speaker and Bernie Fraser, but then there's those people who speak too fast. For me, I like to vary the speed at which I speak at. So sometimes I speak really quickly, and other times I'll just slow it down a bit. So if you do speak too fast, then it's really important that you are aware that you're perceived as a fast speaker. And I've just got a question uh, from Stephen. So Stephen does speak fast. So what do you do? How do you slow yourself down? Well, Stephen, I've got some advice from speech pathologists and what they'll say is that you've been speaking so fast for so long, it's pretty much impossible to slow yourself down. So the antidote, and welcome Anna, the antidote to fast speaking is to use the pause. And I was gonna talk about pause later on. So if you wanna look at someone who speaks fast, but doesn't come across as being too fast, that would be Barack Obama. So Barack Obama does speak very quickly, but he uses that pause just to grab attention and to give people the chance to take on his message. So I'm gonna talk about pause later on. For me, to create vocal variety, I sometimes speed up, and then other times I will slow down because I don't have that radio quality John Law's voice. I don't have that rich intonation, that rise and fall that grabs people's attention. So I need to do other things by varying my speed. Volume. We spoke about do you know your volume, but there's more than just will you reach the back of the room. And do I need a microphone? Do I need to put a lapel microphone on? And I had a lapel microphone the other day when I was speaking. You can use your voice to create impact. And the rule is quite simple. Go opposite to your natural speaking volume. So if you are a loud speaker, and you want to make impact, just soften your voice. Just soften it a little bit. So what I really want you to take away from today is, now if you're a naturally soft speaker, then by increasing your voice on those key points, it has greater impact. So what I'm saying is find your normal speaking volume. Do you call it loud or do you call it soft? When you want to emphasize points, go the opposite. Go loud if you're a softly spoken person. 
Go soft if you've got a strong voice or a loud voice. Just go soft. Just whisper for a few sentences and you'll create great suspense. So that's something really powerful that you can do just by changing the volume of your voice. You can also soften your voice to create tension, to create attention, and to bring the audience back. So one of the things you'll see, especially at networking functions, workshops, where I get the group out there to talk at your tables or talk to the person next to you. You've got 150 people in the room. Turn to the person next to you and share what you've learned so far. So as people are talking, the volume in the room goes up. I now want everybody to come back, come back to me. What do most people do? They shout. And then the volume of the room goes up a little bit. So they go louder. The volume of the room goes louder. And then we go louder. And you don't get them back. And you, then you get the glass where people grab their glass and they get a ting, 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 ting. So another way of bringing people back is to soften your voice. So if, now if you're almost ready, now if you're almost ready, could you come back to the front please? Can I have everyone's attention? What happens is the room is loud, you come in soft. The room says, hang on, I think Peter said something, but I didn't hear what he said. They come down a little bit more. You go softer, they come down. In the end, the room's silent. Now, you may have noticed I did a broken sentence as well, and I'm going to talk about that later on as well. So I didn't say, can you all come back softly? I said, now if, some of you will hear that, doesn't make sense by itself, now if, now if you are almost, now if you're almost what? Now if you're almost finished, could I get everyone to come back? So that's softening your voice as a technique to bring the crowd back. power of the pause. We spoke about pause already and pause being the way that you slow down if you speak too fast. It's kind of like writing a an article. The full stops and the punctuation marks are your pauses. So you can speak really, really quite fast, but what you do in between is you use more pauses and every now and then you lengthen the duration of those pauses. So I love this quote from Sir Ralph Wilson. The most precious things in a speech are pauses. A pause will fill the void, it will capture attention, it will punctuate, illuminate and build the tension within a speech. One of the things we need to do as speakers is become comfortable with silence. And what I mean by silence is the pause. Be comfortable with the pause. This is the power of the pause. So Ralph Wilson said that pauses are really, really important. So we got that, but this is some other things around the pause, if you speak too fast. So think of your message, so you're speaking, 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 think of that as lots of information, lots of knowledge. In fact, let's call them brain drops. What happens when it rains too fast? The water doesn't soak in. So if you speak too fast, people don't get an opportunity to think about what you've said. Use pause when your mind goes blank. If you get a little nervous, you can use pausing to deep breathe. And of course, the ums and ahs that I asked you about, the you knows, and so what we need to do now, and so let's move on. They're often segues or used to gather your thoughts. The pause does the same thing. Can someone ask me 
a simple question and I'll try and demonstrate. Not a complex question, not something that's going to take lots of time. All right. Thanks, thanks, Sarah. Which suburb, the question is, which suburb do I live in? So let me answer. Um, the suburb that I um, live in is um, called Leaderville. Um, in fact, it's called West Leaderville. Let me answer that question again. The suburb in which I live in is called Leaderville. In fact, it's called West Leaderville. Same words, same response. Which one sounded more credible, more confident? Which one sounded like I knew what I was saying? Of course, the second one without the ums and ahs. That's the power of the pause. So I spoke about brain drops. Don't let it rain too heavily. Pause to allow time for the audience to soak up the brain drops. That's the power of the pause. When to use pause if you speak too fast and you need to slow down. When to use pause when your mind goes blank. Are you aware that you out there do not know what I'm going to say next? As I do this little segue, side trip, I don't know what I'm going to say next either. So if I don't let you know that I've forgotten, you have no idea. And if you get a little nervous and you need to breathe, and of course to replace those filler words. The other thing with pause and silence, and I said you need to become comfortable with silence, and this comes from the teachings of Michael Grinder. Silence helps a group form, helps the formation of a group, helps the group gel and become functional. It helps the group become more comfortable. It helps people in the group become more comfortable. So I'm going to use a metaphor or an analogy. I'm going to talk about first dates. So if we cast our mind back to our first date, the first time we went out with a potential partner on a date with someone we liked, the first time we go out, the silence is really quite awkward. You know, we must not have silence. We need to fill the void. We need to fill that silence in because it's uncomfortable. You need to fill it in. Then we go on our second, our third, our fourth, our fifth date. All of a sudden we fall in love. And of course silence is golden. We peer into each other's eyes. No need to say any words because we're so comfortable with each other. What I'm saying is you as a speaker or a facilitator, if you model, if you show that you are comfortable with silence, you're helping that group quickly form and metaphorically fall in love with you because they'll know it's okay to not speak. They'll know it's okay to stay with the moment and think as opposed to having to chat and fill all of those voids. So you can help a dysfunctional group. You can help a unformed group to form quickly simply by modeling silence. The broken sentence. I have just demonstrated that to you. This is how you bring your audience back. And Glenn Capelli, who uses this a lot, calls it a boomerang. And as you throw out part of the sentence, you bring some of the people back. Then you throw out the next part of the sentence and a few more come back. So let me demonstrate once again. Now, if you're, now if you're almost ready, now if you're almost ready to come back, can I have everyone's attention back to the front? That combined with the lowering of the voice is one of the cleverest ways of bringing people back. And if you want to throw in an audio visual, 
sorry, a visual cue. So I will brief people. I'm going to give you five minutes to brainstorm. When I want you back, I'm going to put my hand up and I'm going to ask you to come back. The visual people will see my hand and they'll stop talking. And those that keep talking will notice that as I throw out the broken sentence, now if, now if you're almost ready, now if you're almost ready to come back, can I have everyone to the front? Clever way to bring your audience back. As I said, rather than going louder and louder, just go softer and softer and throw in the boomerang or the broken sentence and you will have success. Just going to pause for a moment. Are there any questions? What other ways can you bring audiences back? Um, you can do an agreed an agreed time. And one thing I like to do, let's say we've now fall, fallen in love, so you've got a really formed group. So they're talking to each other. They're not reliant on you anymore as the facilitator. They're just in the groove and you want them to come back. If you just say, okay, can you all stop and come back? They're not going to like that. So you need to give them the time warnings. So you've got two minutes left. I'd walk around the room. Two minutes to go and I'm going to call you back. Two minutes. And then they know, well, we've only got two minutes left. So they start to move towards wrapping up. One minute, one minute to go. 30 seconds, five, four, three, two, one. If I can have you all back. So that works really well with a formed group. A dysfunctional group, a group that doesn't want to be together, you just have to say, can everyone come back? And they're bang, eyes straight on you because they're not enjoying that brainstorming. They're not enjoying that activity until they get more comfortable with you, the facilitator, and with the people around the table, then they become formed and functional. Another way of bringing people back is to do a little clap. And I do this. If you can hear me, clap your hands. If you can hear me, clap your hands. Those who can hear me, clap your hands. Can you all hear me? Clap your hands. In the end, at about five passages, everyone's clapping their hands and they're silent because they're wondering what's this clapping hands as Peter says something. So there's a couple more ways of bringing people back besides the broken, broken sentence. All right, thank you for the question. Let's put some advanced stuff on your voice. And sometimes you want to be the captain, which means you need a steady voice with a downturn at the end of each sentence. So what I'm telling you is this is the way to be credible. This is the captain telling you welcome on board. We have a flight hour of four hours. We'll be flying at 36,000 feet. I'll get back to you at the end of the flight with an update of conditions on the ground. That's a very credible voice. Then the cabin crew. This is your cabin crew speaking. Our role is to make this flight as pleasant and safe as possible. If any of the crew can help you in any way, please do not hesitate to let us know. Enjoy your flight. So let me deconstruct that just a little bit. And it's mostly the voice that I want to talk about. In terms of nonverbal, you've got the head and you've got the palms. So thanks for coming. I'm really pleased you could make it. Now this is the way forward. Approachable, really nice, really pleased you could make it. This is the four-step process. But let's talk about the voice. Credible has a steady voice. The voice, it's not monotone, but it's fairly steady. The approachable voice goes up and down. As you know, many Australians have an up and down voice, and we do a bit of head bobbing as well. This is approachable. The intonation is at the end of the sentence. This is the tone. At the end of the sentence, the tone goes down for if you want to be credible. If you want to be approachable at the end of the sentence, the voice goes up. One is for sending information. This is where you're telling people the lessons, the way forward. This is seeking information, asking people to cooperate, letting them know I'm really pleased to be here. Do you have anything more to add to that? Credibility, think of that as the captain of your presentation. Approachability, think of that as the cabin crew of your presentation. 
Voice. Simple changes in voice make you seem more approachable or more credible. So how do you use that in a presentation? At the beginning of a presentation, so let's say this is the start point, you want to be approachable. You want to connect, you want to build rapport. So who you are, reveal some of your vulnerability, some of your story. Then as you move on, and we'll draw this into four quadrants, then you want to be credible. So this is the, this is the steps, this is the lessons. This is the way to get rich. This is the way to have a more engaged workforce. This is what I want you to do. Then you want to go into coaching or kind of leading. And once again, you still want to be credible. And then as you wrap up, this is where you now become what I call a peer. You become one of the group. You're no longer a lecturer. You're no longer the tutor. So, hey guys, does that make sense? I'm really hoping there was some valuable stuff there that you can move forward. And this one here is where you connect and build rapport. So you need to be approachable. Too many people come on stage and they start straight away with the credible. They don't take any time to build rapport. This is how you suck eggs. You gotta do it my way or it's the highway. But hang on, woo, woo, Peter, just a moment. Who are you? You haven't taken the time to connect for us to build that trust with you. And without trust, you know no messages or limited messages, exchange of information takes place. It's the trust and the connection and the rapport that helps you get your message across. So that's just a little model using your voice throughout a presentation. Looking after your voice, fluids, drink water. In fact, I'm going to have a drink of uh, lemon tea, hot water with lemon. If you have a dodgy voice, a quivery voice, a shaky voice, don't drink protein. So the skinny latte, the cappuccino is out. Orange juice is not really good. Pineapple is okay. Apple juice is good, as is water. Drink water before, but also sip water during your presentation. If you have a dry mouth, you can wedge your Tic Tac just between your lip and the gum. It'll sit between two teeth, and that'll stay there creating uh, fresh breath and also creating saliva, so your dry mouth disappears. Do warm up your voice. If you were a radio announcer, if you were John Laws about to go on radio, you would do some tongue twisters, some humming, some practice words, some relaxations with the jaw and the tongue. Why, when we go to the gym or go for a jog, do we warm up before we move into it? But why, when we go on stage to speak, for an hour, 45 minutes to 100 people, why do we not do the same warm-ups to, to a more complex system than most of our major limbs? I'll leave that question with you. So look after your voice. Use the right fluids. Do some tongue twisters before you speak. If you want fresh breath and you want plenty of saliva, just put that tic tac. It takes about three hours to dissolve. So that's generally enough for me to get over dry mouth or a presentation. If it drops down in your mouth, that's okay. Nobody knows. Just chew it or swallow it. Nobody knows. And then you can go to sipping water just to prevent the dry mouth. Moving on. Got some workshops coming up. Please share these with your colleagues and your teams and any other networks. The big ones are Bendigo, 4th and 5th of September next week. Uh, Perth, we've got winning presentation skills and assertive communication skills for women. This is a really good workshop for women, women aspiring to be leaders and moving forward. Broome, we're doing our first trip to Broome and we've already got bookings for the two workshops. And of course, Bunbury is coming up on the 11th of September. We will go anywhere to deliver a workshop. Next webinars, five quick relaxes that you can do before public speaking. Not so much about your voice, but how to eliminate noise 
uh, not so much for your voice, but how to just relax and control nerves. And the last one is how to eliminate noise. And I'm not talking about noisy voices. I'm talking about bouncy gestures. I'm talking about PowerPoint slides. I'm talking about distractions for the audience that take away from your core message. So go out there, do a self audit. What is your voice saying about you? And pick one or two things you can do differently. It makes such a big impact on your next presentation.